Hi, my name is John and this is Business Focus. In today's video, we'll be talking about how to find the optimal solution using transportation modeling here. So let's get started. And we're back. Thank you again for joining today. So in today's video, we'll be using Excel Solver to find the optimal solution uh, uh, with the uh, transportation modeling problems. Uh, as mentioned earlier, transportation problem is the one of the most common problems that you encounter, especially if you own a business, in particular with logistics businesses here. So the question now here is how do you find the optimal solution that meets the, the, the supply side criteria versus the demand side criteria on both sides that would yield the, the least amount of cost for the business. So here we have an example of a problem. So here we have a company that manufactures automobiles, uh, which is based from three different factory locations, namely factory D, E, and F. Now you may notice uh, I used DEF for simplicity purposes, which you will see later on why. And then once manufactured, they are distributed uh, for sale at three different locations or regions in this case, regions A, B, and C. So once you have identified the supply side and the demand side, the question here is, uh, what are the requirements here? So let's take a closer look. So you can see here for the supply side, the uh, factory D can only produce 100 units. Factory E can produce only 300 and F as well. And then on the other side, you have regions A has a strict requirement of 300 that needs to be met. B and C has both 200 units that is uh, the demand here. So the question now here is how can you transport from one location to another? Because obviously there's an associated uh, transportation cost as the name of the problem suggests so uh, it's a given values here so let's illustrate here to, uh, to to illustrate the problem here so to transport one unit of product from factory d to region a uh, it will cost you five dollars four dollars to region b and three dollars to region c now let's include the other costings for factory e and f to the three different regions here so as you can see here uh, it, get it gets complicated quickly here, but you can see here, you can, you have, you can break it down so you can find the, 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 the objectives and the constraints here So in order to find the optimal solution here. So once you've identified the, the, the different regions, the requirement and the costings here, now you can start formulating the objectives and constraint. So the next part now is to, to identify, as, uh, as I always suggest, before identifying the objectives constraint is to determine how will you assign the variables here now we will use x as in this case to identify the number of units to be shipped from the different locations from your supplier to your demand or source versus your destination here now what is that x sub i sub j represents here the i represents the source or the supply side the j is the destination or the demand side here now if you notice here in the illustration before uh, below Within each location, with whether it's factory D, E, and F, I have assigned values attached to it so that it would make sense later on as to why we use different values here for, for simplicity for purposes. And as you can see here in region A, we assigned 1, region B is 2, region C is 3. It makes sense later on as to why uh, I, I encoded it there. So again, to identify the objectives, obviously, uh, for transportation is to minimize uh the cost here so how do we minimize the cost here so again uh what's the number of units that you're going to transport let's say you're going to transport from uh factory d going to uh region a so we will assign the source which is location one and region one it's one so x 11 you want to call it and what's the numerical coefficient if you were to transport it? Uh, factory D to region A is $5. And then you add, you go to the next one. So the next one in this case is uh, D to B. So if you notice, it's X1, 2. Sorry. X1, 2. And the numerical coefficient is 4. Then we continue. So from factory D to C now is x13 and the numerical coefficient is 3 and we do the same for the uh, next set so you have x21 
x22 x23 and for the coefficient you have 8 4 3 okay and then lastly you have uh, from factory f to region a b and c so it's x31 x32 x33 and then the co coefficient corresponding coefficient is nine dollars seven dollars and five dollars so that's your objective functions already so you want to illustrate it clearly so that you don't get easily confused actually i can i get easily confused if i don't use it uh, align it properly here so now the question now here is what are the different constraints here as mentioned here so as you can clearly see we'll start with the supply side here subject two so as you can see the the supply side can only put uh, supply 100 units to the different locations here so d a d b and d c so in this case we can only supply x number of units to one one plus x one two sorry x one two plus x one three okay now for the inequality here it less than equal to 100 so regardless of what locations you're going to send those products it cannot exceed 100 units here and we'll do the same for the uh, factory e and f here so you have x21 x22 x23 and it cannot exceed uh 200 300 units and then for the third one you have factory f's constraint uh, it can only supply 300 units to regions a b and c here so x31 x32 and x33 now you notice that the numerical coefficients for the different uh, variables in the constraints are only one here so again here the right answer is 300 as well okay so we're we're finished with the supply side here now the, the next part now is the constraint for the demand side here so meaning the demand side has to be met now the question you have to ask yourselves when you say demand has to be met does this mean that you use less than the amount or less than equal or equal to because three different uh, inequalities will yield different uh, answers in your optimal solution so be wary of that uh, assumption now in this case the right answer is to use equal to because you have to meet the demand now obviously you want to exceed the demand but obviously for this particular problem the inequality that that's most appropriate for this one is equal to so let's get back here so in this case we'll do the reverse in this case so in this case for region one so it's 1-1 one, one, and then 2-1 and 3-1. So if you add all of it, it has to be equal to 300. So if you add all of those, it has to be equal to 300. And then for the second one, for region B, so B, D, B, E, and B, F. So that's 1-2, 2-2. And 3, 2. It has to be equal to 200 here. And for the last one is for C, D, C, E, and C, F. So that's... <clears throat> I Sorry. 1, 3. 2, 3. And 3, 3. Wait, did I... Sorry, I made a mistake here. 2, 1... Sorry. One, two. So let's double check. So it's equals to 200. So let's double check here. So that's one, one. 
one 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 two one three one okay for this one one two 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 three two and then for the last one one three two three 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 okay and lastly x sub i sub, sub i sub j is greater than equal to zero so obviously you cannot uh, this is the non-negativity constraint you cannot have less than zero units if you produce nothing it should be zero but not negative figures here so once you have identified the objectives and constraints we now go on to the next part which is crafting uh, an appropriate spreadsheet model so you can use solver exo solver to find the optimal solution here so in order to create the spreadsheet model you need two parts the parameter and the model part so the first part in the parameter you're going to create a matrix here where your uh, supply side and the mine side intersect in this case your factories and your warehouse intersect so in this case you have factories d e and f and your warehouse a b and c uh, which is what you have here on the left side here so again we have to include the the, the, the uh, supply side constraint of 100 units for factory d for factory e it's 300 and factory f is 300 and then for warehouse a there's a demand for 300 uh, warehouse b for 200 and warehouse c for 200 as well so once you've identified the the constraints for both sides we now to have to include the cost function for each transport from one location to another here so we just copy the values from our objective function you have five four three eight four three nine seven and five now once you're done with that so the next part now is creating the the spreadsheet model the the model part uh, which where you will put all the computations in here so let's let's go here So as you can see here below, so it looks similar to the parameter at the top, but the question is you put formulas here. So the first one is to find the objective or the, the minimiza minimization of cost, you type in the formula sum product and you multiply the number of units in your model and the cost for each of those locations here. So obviously you haven't shift anything, the cost is still zero. Now you need to put formulas here. So you put sum to identify the demand for warehouse A. Then you copy and paste for warehouse B and C as well. And then for supply side demand, uh, supply side requirement, uh, you put in sum as well. For factory D, you copy and paste for the rest. Okay. So here's the easy part now. Here comes the easy part, sorry. So you select data tabs, go to Excel solver. Uh, the objective function as mentioned is to uh, minimize. So you have to select minimization. And by changing the variable cells, you have to select the model part wherein you're trying to identify what, qu what quantities are going to be transferred here. Now the constraint here is, uh, as mentioned, so your cheat sheet on the left side, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven constraints. So you have to have seven constraints in our uh, constraint here. So the left hand side here is, so the first one pertains to the supply side of factory D, right? It's less than equal to 100. The second one is uh, factory E less than equal to 300 and then for the third one supply side in factory f okay here it's less than equal to 300 as well so the fourth one pertains to the demand side for uh, region a okay uh, and take note it says it has to be equal to 300 and then for the next one is warehouse piece constraint demand is equals to 200 and for warehouse C 
uh, demand constraint is equals to 200 as well. Okay, let's click OK. Now, you may notice there are only six. As mentioned, the last one, the non-negativity, you simply check the box. And then change the solving method to simplex LP. And hopefully, we should get the... Oh, wait. I selected the objective function. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. So, and voila. So, as you can see here, we have an optimal solution uh, given here. So, from D, factory D to warehouse A of 100 units, factory E to warehouse B, factory E to warehouse C, factory F to A, factory F to C. Now, let's double check if it indeed uh, did not violate the constraint. So, for the first one, it did not exceed 100. So, it did not violate that. The second one did not exceed 300. The third one, factory F, did not exceed 300. Now, how about the exact requirement has to uh, meet 300 for warehouse A? It did. For warehouse B, 200. And warehouse C is 200 as well. So, it checked all the box. And lastly, for the non-negativity, all are non-negative values here. So, it means... Uh, it we did find the optimal solution here which is pretty remarkable if you think about it and obviously uh, the, the, the the purpose of uh, finding the optimal solution it all stems from crafting the the objectives and constraint uh, carefully uh, not quickly because many tend to make mistakes in the initial part which can have an adverse effect in your uh, final solution here so you can review the video once you've uh, simmered down and try to assimilate the information so you can replay as much as you want so that you can be more proficient in finding the optimal solution. Now, obviously, the transportation problem is just one of the many examples here. Uh, there's the assignment model. Uh, I think we've discussed uh, regular LP problems. You have integer, binary. There are different uh, combinations of linear programming types of problem, but... Uh, obviously, it all stems from identifying the right objectives and enumerating the many constraints here. And as you can see here, we have six, seven constraints constructed here, and there could be even more. And it can get, get complicated quickly here if you're not careful here. Anyway, that's about it. Uh, if you find this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to help continue support the channel. Also, you can leave your comments down below if you have any questions or any suggestion as to future videos, topics that you want to be highlighted or showcased in future videos. Also, you can check out my other contents if you're interested. Uh, there's business update every Wednesdays and Monday checklists uh, on Mondays. Or, or if you're interested in discussion, business discussion on Business Focus Live. Anyway, uh, that's it for today. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.